Welcome back to the channel, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make a really, really easy, beginner-friendly geometry notes motion graphics effect. And it's essentially these little round discs or tiles, whatever you wanna call them, and they're gonna be making them flip around, and it's gonna be done based on the location of any object. So in this case, I just got this cube here that's moving, and that is the proximity object. You use any proximity object you want, mesh object. So um, yeah, and I'll just quickly show you the notes here real quick. Very simple, just a few notes. Some extremely simple materials. I mean, this is about as complicated as it gets. And that's it, so yeah, I'm gonna be uploading the um, final result as well to my Patreon, but if you're not on Patreon, you can still watch this, make it with Blender, which is free, and you can still subscribe, check out some other stuff. So yeah, let's jump in and make this effect in Blender 5.1. Okay, so let's jump into a new document inside of Blender. I've got Blender 5.1 open up at the point of making this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select this cube, I'm gonna go over to my Geometry Notes workspace, and this is what you'll see when you go to the Geometry Notes workspace. Now, when I do a tutorial in this workspace, uh, it can be a little bit hard for people to sort of see the node set up in this sort of confined space. So I have my own custom Geo node set up, but it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same windows that you guys have access to here. But the only thing is I've moved them just around a little bit. Okay, so this is the sort of workspace. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna select your cube in your 3D workspace. You're gonna come over to this window and just click on new. And once again, over in this geospace area, it's just the same thing over here, this window. Okay, once you have a new sort of little network established now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and swap this data out for a um, grid. So we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go search, and let's type in grid. Let's get a mesh primitive grid, and then we'll take that mesh and plug it into the geometry output. And now you can see here, this is what we have. Pretty cool, right? So this is a little bit on the small side, so let's just make it a little bit bigger. So maybe I'll just double it in size by making it two meters on both the X and Y axis. Um, obviously it doesn't have a Z component because it is a flat two-dimensional object. Then the tiling here. Right, if you want to over here, you can just come Z and just go wireframe. You can see currently we only have four faces here because it's just um, the vertice count going across like this. So three across here, three across here. So what we can do, we can actually take this and up it. So I'm just gonna go ahead, um, maybe go 18 for now. 18 by 18, looks good. So now with that done, what I'm gonna do is I wanna add instances on top of here. So essentially, all we're saying here, it's not difficult, everywhere where there's a vertex that makes up um, this grid, so everywhere where there's a point, we just want there to be an object. So we're gonna go Shift A over here in this window, search and type in instances. We're gonna go instances on points, place it on here in this cable. Obviously it disappears over here because we need to tell it what to instance. So we're just gonna drag on this instance over here. There we go, just drag on it, let go, and then type in cylinder let's get a mesh cylinder. There we go. Now, obviously, <laughs> they're really, really big. So we need to dial things down just a little bit here with the radius. So let's make the radius 0 0.05. There we go. Let's make the depth point, and this is just something we have to play with, 0 0.01 maybe. See how that works. A uh, bit thin, I might make 0 0.03. Mm, maybe a little bit too thick. 0 0.02, there we go. I think 0 0.02 works really good. And you can see here, we want them to kind of be close to each other. So I might just come here and take this radius up just a little bit. Let's see what we can get to. So maybe we can make it 0 0.06. That's too much, maybe 0 0.055. There we go, that works better. So now they're kind of close, but not touching. So these are our tiles that we have over here. How cool is that? Okay, so how do we make this flip, okay? So this is actually much simpler than you might think. So what we're gonna do, we actually wanna rotate these things, which is actually easy to do. All you have to go is after the instances, is go Shift A, search, and just type in rotate, space, instances, get to rotate instances, place it on this cable. And this does exactly what you think. It essentially rotates the instances, okay? which is what we want, but we don't want it all to happen at the same time. We only want it to happen in a certain area when an object moves close to it. So what we need here is something called a proximity, okay? And this is really simple to use. We're gonna go Shift A, search and get in proximity and geometry proximity node. Grab that one here. And the thing we wanna work with is the distance. Essentially we're saying we wanna see how close an object is and based on that distance we wanna rotate. So we're gonna take this distance, we're gonna plug it in to the rotation over here. 
okay? And then we wanna tell it what object we want it to base that on. So over here, I'm gonna come in this 3D viewport, I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna go to my mesh options and I'll add in, um, I'll add in a mesh object, I'm gonna add in just a cube, okay? And with this cube, I'm gonna go S just to scale it down about this much. And then I'm gonna click on my geometry notes object again. And now over here, if I go to my scene outliner, which you should have as well, um, it's called cube.001 because we already have the original cube. So I'll just rename things. I'm gonna double click on the original cube, which is our object we have now. I'll call it grid. And then I'll double click on the cube and call it effector. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. But I'm gonna click on the grid again. And now I can just come here and click on the effector just once holding it in and I can drag it into the geometry nodes workspace here. So now we have this object and we're gonna base it relative to where the cube is. So let's change this to relative. And now we can just take the geometry data. So we're essentially saying, look at where this geometry is. Okay, that's what we're using. We're looking at the faces of that geometry. And then we're saying, take that distance and that is where we rotate. You can already see this is starting to work. We now have this sort of gradient, this fall off. We have the rotation effect relative to the distance of this. Now, obviously at the moment, we need a way to hone that in. So what we can do is we can go over here and go Shift A, search and type in mix and just type in vector. So we wanna utilities vector mix vector and then place it on this cable here. And it should be going into the factor actually like so. And now we have a way of essentially saying not only do we want certain one of these to rotate, but we can now actually tell how much we want it to rotate because at the moment, we want to be able to dial that in. So let's just come over here. I think it'll be one of these. So let's try this. If you want to rotate that way, you could. If you want to rotate this way, um, I'm just going to go, maybe go for now with just the middle one here. And I might just give it a value of 3 or 3.5. There we go. That gives us a nice rotation. But it is occurring to me that one of the things is we might not get it rotating fully around unless we do like sort of like a constant, something like uh, pi, but we'll get back to that in a second. For now, let's just go ahead and dial that in a little bit more. So I'm gonna go over here between the geometry um, proximity and the mix. We're just gonna go shift A search and get a color and get a color ramp. There we go, place it in between here. And essentially now we can just dial this. We can bring these values in just to make it a little bit more um, sort of contrasted. So it's not, the fall off doesn't go out as much. I look at this almost like a fall off, okay? A fall off gradient that we've created here. Awesome, so now if you move the cube over here, you can see this is what happens. Look, all these tiles kind of like flip around, but they're not perfectly coming back to flat. So what we'll need to do is we need to change this value here to pi. So I believe that is 3.142. Um, yeah, and they should be flat now. If that didn't work, I would have had to look it up. Yeah, that's what it is. So now they are perfectly flat when they're not being activated. So you can see here, if we move this cube around, we get this rotation. Cool. Now, another thing we're gonna quickly do, we just tab into edit mode. We have, um, sorry, we've got to select the effector. Tab into edit mode, shift D to duplicate, the mass S to scale it down. And now we should have a bit more effect in the inside, I think. We'll see how that works. I might just grab the cube uh, the effector and just hide it in the viewport up here. Grab our plane again here. And it might just have to mess around with this value here till we kind of, you can see we've got a little bit of rotation happening in the inside like that. Maybe fine tune it a bit. It's all relative to where there is faces essentially. So you could always, you know, m mess around with that all you want. Or maybe I'll just dial this in a little bit like this. So just mess around with it till you get something that you like, okay? Doesn't have to be exactly the same way I'm doing it. But anyway, look, we've done the effectness. I'm gonna bring the effector back. You can change, swap this effector for anything you want. So if I tab into edit mode here, I can delete all of this. I can go shift A, just add in a UV sphere, scale that down. And now I've got a UV sphere that is doing the same thing. If I hide that, you can see that's what it's doing. So pretty cool stuff, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna just select this again. Now we need to add the materials, right? Which is actually super simple to do. So we actually need to come here. The thing that's gonna have the materials is actually the cylinder. So let's come here to the cylinder. And in front of the cylinder, we wanna just add two materials. So let's quickly go over to our materials. 
we have our grid selected. We're going to go ahead. There should already be a material because we used a cube. And let's call this black or whatever color you want to make it. Okay, but I'm going to call the first one black. Then I'm going to go plus and go new. And this one, I'll just call it a mix of colors, okay? Because it's going to be different mix random. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we can do that. And then what we want to do, we're going to come over here next to the cylinder. Shift A, search and get a set and get a set material. Place it here. And then we place the first one here. Let's select that black material. And then let's go Shift D to duplicate that. Place it next to here again. And then the second material, we're going to make it that mix random. Okay. So there's actually a way we can tell it where to be just by plugging something now into the selection, which is really, really cool. So what we'll do over here is we'll just use the index. Now the index, and I'll quickly show you, is this stuff over here. We can use a sort of data. So each sort of face vertex edge has a number assigned to it. And we can kind of take advantage of that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go Shift A, search, and we're going to get an index node, okay? And it's a read node. That's why it's this sort of pinkish red, because we're reading data. And we're going to plug that index into the selection, okay? But that doesn't mean anything, because we need to tell us what is rare on the index, a range, right? So we need to go and use a math node. So we're going to go Shift A, search, and get a compare. And I think we should be able to change this to an integer. And we want to change it from greater than to equal. And then we place it on this little cable now. But we're essentially saying anything that is equal to a number. So for example, if it's one or greater, two or greater, and that's where that material is going to be applied. But we can't really see it now because we need to just quickly go down materials. Let's select the black. And let's just go down to the viewport display and make it black so we can actually see that it's applied. And let's go to the rant, mix random, go to the viewport display and give that a color, OK? So at the moment, we just need to kind of mess around. I can see some places have it, some places don't. So I'll just kind of make, make this 0. And it seems like the 0 actually works. It's giving us the result we want. But it's currently sort of inverted. So maybe instead of making it equal, I'll make it not equal. And then that flips that around. Cool, so they all have this material here until they don't. In fact, I just made it um, a greater than and just made it equal to zero. And then it gives us sort of like the black tiles only at the top, but we still get the red material here in the sides a little bit. So I'm just gonna go with greater than and a value of zero here, okay? But mess around with that all you want, okay? Awesome, so let's now actually go ahead and we also want to turn off the rendering for our effector so we don't see it in the rendering. But let's go over to our layout. Let's go over here and we'll go, if you don't already have a camera, just add one, but I'm going to use the scene camera in here. I'm just going to zoom in closer here and just kind of get a shot that I like. I might just up the focal length for the camera, something like that. Then I'm going to go Shift A. I'm going to go to my light options, add in an area light and just move it up. And I might just give it a power of like 120. And then I'm just going to go to my render engine, change it from EV to cycles. If you have a GPU, I always recommend you use it. I'm going to make my max um, render samples 45. And then I'm going to get my camera view and I'm going to go Z and go render it. And you can see this is what we have. So what you can do now is select your geometry object, go to your materials, grab the black material and make it sort of like darker. You can make it metallic and bring down the roughness. Okay, that's really cool. And if you wanted to, you can go to your world properties and you can come here and add in the sky texture and give it like a value of 0.2 or something, just so you have a bit of sort of like HDRI lighting. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna select this again. I'm gonna go back to the materials and then just to mix random, we can go to the base color here and then give it a red color. But I said, I'm gonna show you how to make these random. I'm gonna to stick to what I said. So to make that work, each one of these objects has to be realized as an instance, okay? So that's a very simple thing to do. Just select it, go over to your geometry nodes. Just come here after the rotate instances and then go shift a search and just get a realize and get a realize instances. And while we're at it, let's just go shift a search and get a set shade, get a set shade smooth, place it on here. And then what we'll do is we'll actually go over to our shading workspace, go to your camera view, go Z and go rendered. You need to see this in rendered view. And then we're going to go read the geometry and we're going to get mesh islands. So we're going to go shift A, search and get mesh islands. And I think that's actually called a geometry. We actually need to use a geometry because it's basing it on the geometry. And we want to go with the geometry random per island. So type in geometry random per island. And essentially what it's going to do, if we plug that into the base color here, 
It's gonna say for each one of these mesh islands, so if it's isolated, we're gonna give it its own color. Or sort of like, I should say gradient really, because it's not a color. And then we can hone that in by going Shift A search and getting a ramp, and let's grab a color ramp. Place it on here and then dial these two together. So now you can see, we can really see this effect, this sort of random color effect. So if I give this black, maybe like a red color, which I'm gonna go ahead and do like so. And then I can grab the second one here and make it sort of like a dark red. And maybe I can add one more of these in and maybe make that sort of like a nice orange. And I'm gonna change it from linear to constant and then kind of drag these values around a little bit like so. Now, this light here is too bright, so I'm just gonna select it, and I'm just gonna move it over to the side, rotate it in a little bit, and I might just come here and bring the strength down to 40 at this scale. And now you can see that a little bit better. I might also just go to my world properties and bring down the strength of that HDRI. And now you can see that's looking really, really good. Awesome, so what I might do as well is just go Shift A, just add in a plane, scale it up, bring it down. And then you could add a material to that plane and I might just go sort of like a darker kind of color. You can try whatever you want, but you kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. You can mess around also with the sun rotation just so you get sort of like the effect you're going for. But yeah, that's it. Um, that's how you can do this effect. And now you can see um, one last thing, obviously, this is completely up to you, but you can get your effector back and then just select your effector you can simply go to your frame one, you can move it anywhere you want in the scene. And then you can go I to insert the keyframe and then move up a little bit and then just move it over wherever you want. Honestly, wherever you want the effect to be and then hit I and then just move it around randomly. So this bit, I won't show you how to do because you could just do that yourself. Honestly, just move it around, add in keyframes and make the animation whatever you want it to be, okay? So yeah, that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll quickly show you guys my original. This is my original here, same deal. Um, but this is the one I'll be uploading to Patreon. It's the exact same thing. I just spent a little bit more time on the lighting and added in a bit of depth of field, did a HDRI, but that's about it. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you like this, subscribe, check out my other stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.